Welcome back to the JavaScript Essential Training Series. I am Mike King, your host, and in this tutorial we'll be talking about the syntax of JavaScript. What exactly is syntax? Well, if you're new to programming, that may be a question that you're asking yourself. In programming, syntax is the set of rules that govern how language is constructed to develop the program. Every programming language has rules that instruct how the terms are formed and constructed to make up the programming structure. A JavaScript program is a list of instructions that are executed by the computer in the order the instructions are entered. In programming languages, these instructions are called statements, and in JavaScript we learned earlier in an earlier tutorial that each statement makes up an instruction and will always end with a semicolon in JavaScript. And we actually talked about that in an earlier tutorial when we were talking about statements and comments inside of JavaScript. JavaScript is a programming language. Regardless of what you might hear, it's a full-fledged programming language. There's been all kinds of scuttlebutt running around for years. The JavaScript, because it only works with the web, it's not really a programming language, and it really isn't full-featured, and disregard all that. It is very full-featured, and with every iteration and every new version of JavaScript that comes out, it becomes more and more featured and developed around developing very interactive, very robust web applications. So don't, don't let anybody fool you. It is a full-fledged programming language. We heard the same thing about PHP for years also, but they are full-fledged programming languages. They can do just about anything that a regular programming language can do. It's just that they're written specifically for web development. JavaScript statements are composed of values, expressions, keywords, and comments. So what we're gonna do, let's move into our development environment, and we're gonna walk through a bunch of different demonstrations on how we actually put together these different features of the programming language to build statements in JavaScript. All right, so let's drop out of our presentation and drop down into our development environment. I'm going to go ahead and confirm I've got my Apache server up and running, which I do. Bring up Sublime Text 3, which will be my text editor that I'll be using for this demonstration. And I'm going to bring up Google Chrome, which will be the browser that I'll be using. I'm still in the Section 1 folder of my JavaScript training. If you've um, purchase the tutorial, you'll have access to all those files. Inside my template.html, I'm going to do a save as. Let's go ahead and save this as syntax.html. Again, I don't want to overwrite that template file. So I'm just going to call this syntax.html. Save that, go into my browser. Let's go ahead and load that file up so we've got that one loaded inside our browser window. All right, so again, syntax is an important aspect of any programming language. We've got to understand the syntax in order to actually understand how to enter these statements inside of our programming language to make them work. And one of the things we talked about, talked about inside of our presentation is all of our statements end with a semicolon in JavaScript. So if I create a variable, and we'll say it's variable x, and that's going to be equal to 22, I end that with a semicolon. Again, variable y, that's going to be equal to 11, and that with a semicolon. And then if I want to create a dynamic variable, so variable z is going to be equal to x plus y, again, and that with a semicolon. So we always enter our statements, or end our statements with a semicolon, and we have to remember that inside of JavaScript, Everything that we do in JavaScript has got to be enclosed inside those script tags, or it's not going to work. You'll notice we didn't have any color coordinating, or any color coding, I should say, inside of our variables when I was typing those in because they were not included in the script tags. The script tags are extremely important when we're entering our, entering our JavaScript, unless it's in, linked to an external file. So make certain, again, Everything ends with a semicolon. We always include all of our JavaScript inside of script tags. When we're talking about syntax, let's talk about JavaScript values. JavaScript syntax defines two types of values inside of JavaScript. We have fixed values and we have variable values. Fixed values are called literals and variable values are called variables. JavaScript, JavaScript literals are the most important rules for writing fixed values, our numbers are written with or without decimal points. So one of the most important rules for writing fixed values in JavaScript, and again, these are literals, 
numbers are written with or without decimal points. So we can write them either way. They're accepted inside of our JavaScript. And when we're dealing with strings, strings are text and they're written within double or single quotes. Either set of quotes will work. So again, an important aspect of the syntax, literals, numbers are written with or without decimal points. String values are written with quotation marks, either single or double. So if I wanted a variable and I wanted that variable to be 10 and a half, I could write that equal to 10.50. That would be one way, and it with a semicolon. Or I could write it variable equal 10.5 making certain that we give it a name, by the way, because I'd have to give the variable a name, obviously. So I put M and I put M. And again, because we know that it's case sensitive, those are two completely different variables. If we're writing strings, it's variable name equal, I could have them in double quotation marks as the name. Again, very important aspect, or I could have them in single quotation marks. Either way, it's going to be just fine. It's going to work just fine. So we have to remember we can use either double or single quotes for our string variables. One other thing I want you to remember as we're talking about the syntax in JavaScript is JavaScript expressions. An expression in JavaScript is a combination of values, variables, and operators which compute to a new value. In other words, we can actually have expressions Let's say, for instance, I had an expression of 15 times 10 inside of JavaScript. That's actually an expression that would evaluate, obviously, to 150. That's an expression. Again, variables, values, and operators. Or I could have x times 10. So if I have x times 10, and again, everything ends in a semicolon. Actually, x is probably not a good example when I'm using the x because I'm using it as a multiplier. We actually have a variable x there. So let's just use y times 10. And again, and it's, and it's an expression. I've got a variable, which is y, an operator, and a value, which is 10. My operator is the multiplication sign. My value is 10. So once again, JavaScript expressions can include values, variables, and operators. And you'll see that as we go through these exercises. JavaScript keywords are used to identify actions to be performed. A good example is the variable keyword that we've been using throughout the demonstration so far. There are a lot of keywords inside JavaScript. Variable is just one of them, or the var keyword is just one of them. Keywords tell JavaScript what to do. In the, in the instance of the var keyword, it tells a browser to create a variable. So it's actually telling the browser, okay, this is going to become a variable. It's going to store some data, create the variable. We talked about comments in an earlier tutorial with the two forward slashes. We can actually store comments inside of our code. JavaScript is case sensitive. All JavaScript identifiers are case sensitive. Don't forget that. We talked about that a little bit earlier. If I have a variable called name, N-A-M-E lowercase n, and I have a variable called name uppercase n, they are two completely different variables inside of JavaScript. So we have to keep that in mind when you're naming your variables that they are case sensitive inside of JavaScript. Real quick, let's talk about camel case because I tend to use camel case a lot as I'm naming variables or even naming functions inside of JavaScript or inside of almost all my programming languages that I program with. Historically, programmers have used three ways of joining multiple words together inside variable or methods or function names. We can use hyphens, which I don't like to use. A lot of times you'll see this first name with a hyphen in between. I don't like using those because the hyphen is an operator in most all programming languages. I don't like using it. It's the minus operator. So I tend not to use that. I have used underscores. Underscores could be like this. That's not so bad. So I have been known to use underscores. What I tend to use most often is camel case. So if I wanted to have a first name, I'd actually do it like this. Lowercase, the first letter of the first word, and then uppercase, the next name, or the next 
first letter of every other word. So if I wanted a first name here, it would be like that. First, and then capital N for name, capital H for here. That's called Campbell case. I tend to use that a lot. I leave the first letter of the first word lowercase. A lot of people actually make that one uppercase also. I tend to leave it lowercase. That's just the way that I picked it up when I was going through college. It's kind of, it makes it easier for me and I actually like reading it this way. It makes it easier for me to understand as I'm reading it. I can quickly glance at this long list of letters and pick out what I'm naming. So in programming language, especially in JavaScript, camel case often starts with a lowercase. I tend to use lowercase for all my languages. As I uh, program, you'll see that if you're going through my Perl courses, my PHP courses, you'll see I tend to use camel case and I tend to leave the first letter lowercase. So that was a high level overview of how we deal with syntax inside JavaScript. Important points to take away. These are the takeaways I want you to get from this particular tutorial as we move forward and start digging or diving deeper into JavaScript. All your statements end with a semicolon, very important. Keywords are reserved in JavaScript. In other words, variable, and you're gonna, we're gonna run into a whole bunch of keywords as we go through these, this training. But keep in mind that there are some reserved keywords. Var is one of them that we've been using quite often. And when I name my variables, I tend to name them with camel case. That's just the way that I learned in school. It's the way that makes it easiest for me to read. All our strings in JavaScript, as we're declaring them or assigning them to a variable, are either enclosed in double or single quotation marks. And JavaScript can accept numeric values with or without decimal points. So take that away. These are important takeaways. And we're actually going to go through a class, a full class on operators in probably the next couple of tutorials so that you can actually see what all the different operators we can use in JavaScript. So I hope you enjoyed it and I look forward to seeing you in the next tutorial.